Anyone else really into succulents and cactus, cacti? Hey Pyro, I am super excited about this month's Crate Club project. We are making a key organizer this month. So if you got the box, this is going to be coming to your doorstep. If you got the wood burning tools and accessories kit also, then you will have almost everything that you need tools wise also. And this video tutorial is going to show you how to make this. If you are part of the Crate Club, then you have all of the materials already that you need to put this together. If you're not a part of the Crate Club, you got to get it yourself or you gotta go sign up, <laughs> crateclub.burnsavvy.com. Go check it out. In the meantime, let's get started on this guy. So what you need is a piece of wood. It's approximately nine by four inches. This is a slice of basswood that's live edge. If you need to drill your own holes, I did these about a half an inch up, about two inches apart. Then you will have your pattern. You need the carbon paper and the transfer tool. You can use a pencil if you don't have one of these, but if you do have, the wood burning tools and accessories kit. You'll have the scissors, you'll have the tracing tool, you'll also have the sanding block. And tape a polycrylic finish and a paintbrush to apply it. The hooks, of course, and sawtooth hangers. And then just a burner and a hammer. So, first thing you want to do is sand it. Now this is optional, you don't have to do it. I'm using a 220 grit block here. Now I need to choose a burner. For this project, we are going to be doing some basic shading. You can use this one. This is the chisel tip or the universal point. It has a flat side on either side, a sharp diagonal edge. You can use this tip. I actually don't know the name of this. My machine didn't come with a name, but it's a cylinder cut at a diagonal. You can also use one of these points. This is a shading point. It's also known as a leaf tip. If you have a wire nib, I would recommend a tip like this or a shading tip like this. Now this one is a larger shading tip and this one is the smaller shading tip. For this project, I'm going to be using the smaller shading tip. It's going to be a little bit easier to use in those smaller spaces. But feel free to use whatever it is that you have, or at least whatever it is that you're most comfortable with. Now, I prefer my professional tool. This is a Colwa detailer. If you don't have one of these, I will put a link of the description for you of where you can get one. Now you want to cut out your pattern. Okay, so I am centering it mostly right here and then between the holes and the edge of the bark here. And then I'm gonna tape that down in place and I'm just gonna tape down this edge and this edge so that I can lift it up and put it back down without losing my place. So I can lift it up anytime I need and place it back down and it will go in exactly the same spot. That's what I want. Now I'm going to trace it and I'm going to take my carbon paper and my tracing tool. The carbon paper needs to go shiny side, face down. Remember, you can always reuse carbon paper or graphite paper depending on what you're using. If you have my box, it's carbon paper. And then you'll take your tracing tool and trace it. You can trace lightly. You don't have to push hard. That's the beauty of using this transfer paper is you barely have to press at all. And that's nice because we all get a little worn out when we burn for a while. So this way we know we can press lightly and ease up on our wrists a little bit. All right, let's have a look. Looks like I got everything there. So now I will get the pot. Now you can see that I traced a little spot a couple of times and then I traced outside the lines here. I don't want to burn over that and I don't really want to have to fix that. So I'm going to use a sand eraser. This is what they look like. 
and the sand eraser is really good at taking off these pencil marks, the carbon marks. These are in that wood burning tools and accessories kit that you can get as an add-on with your box. There you go. And if you want to, you can trace that back in or you can just let that be. See how much cleaner that looks? Much better. Once that's done, it's time to burn. Now, if you don't wanna do shading or shading intimidates you, simply burn over all of these little lines that you see, and that will be a super cute and simple line artwork that you can do. Here, we are going to take this to an intermediate level. So what I am doing is I am turning my heat on, and what I want to do is I wanna make sure that it's dark enough that I can get a good black burn if I burn slow enough. Now, if you have the box, you'll have a practice piece of wood here. If you don't have heat adjustable temperature on your burner, you're just gonna have to work with speed, whether you go slowly or quickly, okay? So for me, this puts me at about a five and a half. Now it might be a little bit different on the basswood than it is on the poplar. So I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit so I'm at a five instead of a five and a half. Now for me, a coal wood, a five is in the middle. For you and your burner, it might be different. Some burners hit a nice dark color at a way low temperature and others you have to crank it all the way up to the highest heat. So you just have to work with whatever kind of burner that you have, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're going to put in edges, okay? Now, when you're doing line art, you want a nice hard edge. When you're doing shading, you want a soft edge, okay? So I'm gonna put in soft edges around this whole thing. Remember, it's better to go light than it is to go dark. When in doubt, lighten up your heat. I'm keeping the sharp edge of my nib on the edge of the plant and the soft edge on the inside. And I'm mostly just starting with the shadows on the left side or the bottom side. I'm gonna turn the wood here in a minute to take care of the rest. That way I don't have to keep turning the piece of wood and I don't have to keep turning my hand. If you would like to finish the piece entirely like you wanna fi finish this little petal first, just turn the wood as you go, okay? I typically do that, but when I'm videoing, I actually don't for the sake of the viewer. I don't want you guys to get sick. <laughs> so I'll turn it back around and keep going. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it do all the other sides. So I've got that blocked in. I'm going to pull some texture out from the center. So I'm going to turn this upside down because I like to pull my burner toward me. And I'm going to pull basically from the stalk and from the bottom of the leaf. And I'm doing a quick pull just like that. Quick pull, mostly from the bottom, going all the way up that leaf, but I'm not touching the top of it. Pull, pull. Let me slow this down so you guys can see it. A little bit better. Pull, pull. Now that one looks like it's already done, so I'm gonna keep going going to pull from the bottom.
I'm going to darken the inside of the pot all the way. So now I'm going to do a similar thing with the pot where I lined the edges and then I'm going to bring in the sides. So I'll put the sharp edge on the outside of the pot. Do the same on the other side. And then do the same across the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to bring those sides in just like I did from the base here. I'm going to bring it in on the sides. And what you want to do is shade in the direction of the texture. So this is going to have a slightly circular movement, just slightly mostly from like the right side down to the left. Kind of following the base of the pot. And then go back in and fill in new spots if you want to. If you want to have more smooth texture, then take your time. It generally takes more time and effort if you want it to be smooth. Then I'll turn it. Do the same thing going this other direction, except I'm going from, my arch is gonna go from the left to the right. So up a little to the middle. Next, we're going to do basically the same thing. I'm going to outline it a little bit lighter this time instead of so dark like I did this side. With some basic outlines, I'm now going to pull in, just like we did over here, but I'm gonna pull it in from the tips of the petals. Now I want to do the same thing from the center of the petals. Okay, now that plant is done and we're gonna work on the pot. So again, we're going to line this This is getting a little bit hard for my hand to burn here. So I'm gonna put one of my bean bags under my wrist to prop my hand up to the same level as my wood. If you don't have a bean bag, I highly recommend getting that wood burning tools and accessories kit because those are in there also, along with the scissors, the sanding block, and the tracing tool and other things. And we'll do the same thing with this that we did with this. The only difference is there's no curve. So we'll be bringing, be bringing it straight across. We're gonna follow these lines on this side and follow these lines on this side. I want to add a little bit of a shadow. So I'm going to make slightly darker lines here underneath this lip. I'm going to add a little shadow underneath the plant. So just coming here right up against the pot where it kind of the plant is closest to the pot, 
we're going to add a teeny tiny little shadow. Now the shadow needs to go in the direction that the pot is going. Okay. All right. And the closer to the pot, the more the shadow. Okay. And if you need a little more contrast there, I would just darken up a little bit more the leaf. Not too dark, just enough to add some contrast. Then onto our last plant. Again, we're going to do the outline with a soft edge around pretty much the entire plant. Now we're going to pull in from the center. So this bottom part is the cactus itself and this is the flowering part. So what we want to do is pull it out from the center here. And of course, if you are enjoying this tutorial so far, it would be amazing if you'd hit that like button so this can get in front of more pyros who would enjoy tutorials like this. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Pyro. Now we're going to do a similar feel here, but instead of doing a V shape, we're going to do it in more of a circular feel. I'm gonna pull it in from the outside edges this time. And we're going in, again, a circular fashion, kind of like we did on the pot here. Cool. But then here, it switches. And then we'll start pulling straight and then pull to follow this curve. Then we'll do the same here, where we curve slightly from the right down to the left, and then in the middle go straight and then to the right, fading slightly out towards the right, okay? Now this being the center, I want to have some depth here. So I'm going to do it again, pulling from the center here. You also want to make it darker right where it meets the cactus. <laughs> Come around this side and we'll do the same thing. Pull out from the center in the same circular fashion and then darken it where it meets the cactus. Now we're gonna go through and add the little spines. To do that, I'm gonna take this nib, get to a sharp edge, and I'm gonna make some V shapes, okay? So if your nib does not make V shapes, switch to a nib that does. So now we are going to do the same thing with this pot that we did here. We will darken this section next to the plant and then we will pull in those edges. Then we will add a shadow around the lip here, just like we did on this side.
And there we have it. Our three beautiful succulents, a fairly easy shading project, although shading is the hardest thing to do in wood burning. So give yourself a hand. For the sealant, I've got a piece of cardboard that's clearly been used a number of times for sealant. And I am going to take my polycrylic and I'm going to stir it with my paintbrush. Then I will apply one layer to the front and to the sides. Now when you're doing the edges here, I don't swipe so much as I tap. And the tapping helps to get it into all the little corners and all the little nooks, but it also helps to pop the little bubbles that inevitably show up when you are trying to seal the bark. Just wipe it off real quick, get all that bark off of there, and then do a quick swipe to touch up the edge there. Then we're gonna let that dry for two hours. And if you want to preserve your brush without having to wash it out, what I like to do is wrap it in a grocery sack and then I can save that for two hours and it doesn't dry out and I can still use it again. Now something else, sometimes the sealant can drip down and try to glue those edges down. If you're concerned about that, find something to prop it up, like a roll of tape or a couple of little blocks of wood. And then it can dry and it can drip, but it will not glue it to the cardboard. Once it's been drying for about two hours, you wanna sand it ever so lightly with the 220 grit. Open up your brush, open up your sealant, stir it again, and put a second coat on. And it's okay if some of the holes seal up and close up because when you put the hardware in, it will just puncture straight through that. So don't worry about it sealing up the hole. Once that's cured for 24 hours, it is time to add the hanging hardware. And you wanna do this before you add the hooks. So what we're gonna do is we're going to measure this about three and a half to three and three quarters inches up. If you want yours lower, three and a half is great. If you want it higher, you can do it at four. So I marked the two sides and I'm going to give this a very light swipe across the back between the two lines. And that will help it to look like it's hanging straight. So then you simply place these somewhere along that line. You want it to be fairly close to the edges. Personally, I'm just gonna eyeball it, probably just put it in a finger width in and put it back on the line, make sure it's lined up on the line and mark it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark the holes with the screw tip because those nails are so tiny to get in, they're just so hard to hold. So I'm gonna take this hook, the sharp part of the hook, and I'm going to press in to those holes just so that my nail has a place to go. And what that does is it helps me for when I put down my sawtooth hanger and the nail wants to wander, it gives the sharp part of the nail a place to stay. And then I will hammer in all of those nails into place. Notice I'm using some pliers to save my fingers. <laughs> you don't have to use pliers, that's totally optional, but I like to use them. The last step is to insert the hooks. I like to just give the hook a little twist back and forth to dig into that hole a little bit before I start twisting it. Now my hook wants to stop right here. I'm gonna twist it a little bit further. Basswood is semi-soft, so I can do this, but I don't want to do it too much because I don't want to strip the hole that the hook just screwed into. But having it dent in just a little bit, I feel like keeps that hook really nice and secure. If I were to 
twist it out just a little to make it straight up and down, then it wouldn't do its job. So it needs to be in good and snug. Make sure all the hooks are perfectly aligned the way that you want them to be, and then it's ready to hang. If this video tutorial was right up your alley, you definitely need to be a part of the Burn Savvy family in the new channel membership that just launched. You can get access to badges, to emojis, to exclusive members only videos, tutorials, behind the scenes, sneak peeks, and these videos are not available to the public. Check out this video to see what level is best for you or check the link in the description. So go sign up. You're going to love it. As always, happy burning. Later, Pyro. Oh, I just love it.